Well, if it's true that every picture tells a story, a new exhibit at the Heinz History Center is full of stories about our past. In today's Pittsburgh History Today, History Center President and CEO Andy Masick is here with a preview of what we'll see in the new display. This is kind of fun. It really is. It's a new way of looking at history oh, right. through the eyes of artists, illustrators, the, the people who do things in newspapers and in magazines. Uh, they are great interpreters. They're great storytellers, and that's what we ask them to do. And so I like this play on words, this artifacts. The art of, of facts. facts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so we said, you know, as long as it's about Pittsburgh history, we want to see what you can do visually with it. So uh, Nora Thompson started with uh, the story of Pittsburgh's H. Why does Pittsburgh have an H on it, uh, after all? Yeah. And so she comes up with this, uh, this idea of uh, people stealing Pittsburgh's H because in 1890, the Geographic Names Board and the Postal Service conspired to take Pittsburgh's H away and just make it a burg with a G like all the other bergs in America. All right. But the people of Pittsburgh petitioned Congress to get their H back, and in 1911, Pittsburgh got its H back. And so here's, here's the di discovery, uh, the big reveal of Pittsburgh's H coming back home. And there's more than 50 new works of art? 50 that, artists yeah. were selected, and the Pittsburgh Society of Illustrators has been around for about 20 years. They've got lots and lots of members, and tremendous talent uh, and we're revealing history at the same time we're revealing talent like like uh, Rick and Tollick's uh, depiction of young H.J. Hines farming in Sharpsburg uh, cultivating the horseradish in his mother's garden and he put it in clear glass bottles horseradish sauce with his friend Clarence Noble it was called Hines and Noble horseradish sauce well it was going great, but then there was a depression. They filed for bankruptcy, and it looked like Heinz was going to go out of business. Okay. But in 1876, he comes back strong with a new product made out of tomatoes, ketchup. And that's it. Save the day, huh? Yep. Um, so are these pieces of art, are these works of art, are they all new, or have they been around for a while? They were it just created for this exhibit. Wow. They worked with our curators at the History Center, and the curator said, you know, uh, you can tell stories that we know about, but maybe put a different spin on it, or tell us some stories we've never heard about. Now, everybody's heard of the Johnstown Flood right, in yeah. 1889, but uh, Brian Dumb depic depicted the day of the flood in 1889 with Andrew Carnegie and Andrew Mellon and all the other rich guys at the South Fork uh, Fishing and Hunting Club fleeing Racing away. from the, yeah. And if you look behind them in that picture, you see this wall of water crashing down on them as their wild-eyed horses are running through the forest. And if you look, there's a woman in that picture too. It's Clara Barton and she was the founder of the Red Cross and the Red Cross came to the aid of the people in Johnstown in 1889 so the artist has chosen to throw her into that image as well. So it, this did not actually happen but no. it's just a, a fun way to tell the story and to learn a little bit more about that incident. It, it's a flight of fancy and right. when you look at the faces <laughs> on those uh, industrial magnets though you can imagine how they might have felt after their dam broke Right. Uh, destroying the town of Johnstown and uh, they felt uh, kind of guilty about it and you see that guilt in their faces. That's a, I, I really enjoy that. That's funny to see Well, <laughs> to there see are some that, stories that happen, aren't so funny right. in this, uh, this exhibit. Uh, Vince Ornato did a depiction of a tragedy that occurred in 1978 in Pittsburgh when they were demolishing a bridge and a iron worker by the name of Ralph Winner was using an acetylene torch to cut up a bridge. This is the bridge that uh, preceded the Birmingham Bridge and they needed to blow it up so he came out with a cutting torch and the iron shifted. It trapped his legs, it pinched his legs and he used his acetylene torch to cut away the iron to free one of his legs but his other leg couldn't be freed. A doctor, a young internist who had been on the job here in Pittsburgh for one week was, you know, 
know, had to teeter out there on the bridge. He amputated oh. Ralph Winner's other leg and they saved his life. The amazing thing was it was all on television. It was the first of these kind of uh, reality daring rescues and it unfolded before America on television. That's fascinating. And Ralph Winner survived. He lived to the age of 87. He died just last year. Unbelievable. But here it is Unbelievable story. In art. We, we had a picture up for a while there, and that was of Pittsburgh's food, food scene. Well, food scene, uh, Mark Bender, a uh, terrific artist, shows that Pittsburgh really is a foodie city. Look yeah. at the forks across the oh. uh, rivers uh, where our bridges are. There's uh, Andy Warhol's tomato soup can uh, floating down the river. There's the good ship Lollipop. The fountain at the point is pumpkin pie with uh, whipped cream on it. So there, there are all kinds of fanciful interpretations of Pittsburgh. And what is your favorite? Well, you know, I like uh, Nellie Bly, the story of Nellie Bly that was done by Kathy Rooney. Nellie Bly was the first uh, investigative reporter. She was a woman. She traveled around the world in 72 days, yeah. beating Phineas Fogg's record. And so uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for uh, a good story, and Nellie Bly is a great story. Okay, well, this is certainly a must-see. I think it's such a unique way to, to hear the stories, even if the pictures may not tell the truth, it's still a unique way to learn a little bit more about history. Everyone can tell history, not just historians, but artists as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Andy. And you can come and see the exhibit and more at the Heinz History Center located on Smallman Street in the Strip. And keep watching for more Pittsburgh history today here on PTL when President and CEO Andy Masick joins us as a regular guest.